All right, guys, here we go. Number eight. So on the grid, draw the graph of y plus 3x equals 4 for the values of x that range from minus 2 to 3. So one thing you have to observe is that this is simply a straight line graph. If you're not sure what is a straight line graph, it's basically a graph that has um, an x, like mx, and a plus c. In other words, you've got a single number and you've got a single x, like that. Okay, so it, it matches this one. So because it's a straight line graph, you, you naturally just need two points and then just draw a straight line. So let's have a look at this, yeah? We're going to ignore this kind of thing for a second. So the first thing you want to do is always rearrange to make y the subject, for convenience sakes. So what you could do is literally move the plus 3x across the equal sign to make it minus 3x. So be y equals minus 3x plus 4, or 4 minus 3x. Now all you simply want to do is literally um, pick a value for x like minus 2. So plug in in minus 2, you get something like that to get a y value and also plug in another value for x like 3. So the reason why we do this is because we just need to find some coordinates here. Yeah? And when you do that, you're going to get two results. So someone thankfully has done it, or <laughs> someone I know has done it. And literally when you plug in minus 2, you get a result of uh, 10. So this gives you 10. Now if you plug in 3, minus 3 times 3 is minus 9. Minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5, which is here. And that's it. So what this tells you here that at x equals minus 2, so we have a coordinate of minus 2, this gives, this gives us a y coordinate of 10. When x is 3, we get a y coordinate of minus 5. And you simply just plot these two, so minus 2, 10, as we know is here. And, and 3 minus 5, you go 3 across and drop 5 down. And simply, if you want to be extra safe, literally just find another point, or like this guy done every point, and connect straight line. When you connect a straight line, it will cut through all the points anyway. But I always, to be extra safe, always find a third point. Like, I don't know, a point between minus 2 and 3, like, let's say 0. So when you get, so when x equals 0, we're going to have minus 3 times 0, which is 0, plus 4, which is 4. So this would be the fourth coordinate. 0, and that gives you a 4. And 0, 4, well, 0, 4 is there. So yeah, it checks out. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, number 9. All right, so it's quite small. So here they give us a right angle triangle with an angle of 52 at Q and a length of 12.7 on, on this vertical length here. Yeah? They want us to work out the length of RP, so this one here. So when you give you a length to work out, just give it a name like X, yeah? So we're gonna try and find the value of X. Now when you look at this one, this is just your standard textbook question, yeah? Uh, we have a, literally a soccer toa problem since we have an angle on two sides. So so ka Tower. and it's right angled of course now all you want to do is literally analyze what lengths we have so we're basically working with the opposite so opposite of 52 is known as the opposite length so o and next to 52 is known as the adjacent so we're, we're naturally working with o and a so which one is o and a well only toa has it because this has a h and o h so when you have toa it literally represents the tan c for tan of the angle 52 must equal um, opposite over adjacent. So opposite is x over adjacent, which is 12.7. Okay, now all you literally do is just rearrange find x. And you can do that by multiplying 12.7 across. So you're going to have 12.7 times tan 52 equals x. And putting that in the calculator, you're going to get to three significant figures, um, 16.3 centimeters. All right, number 10. So Emily made six cakes. It cost her a total of £7.60 to make the cakes. Now she sold two of the cakes for £3.50 each, meaning they were both £3.50. Two times £3.50 is £7. Okay. She sold the other four cakes for £4.25 each. So four times £4.25, 16 plus 1 is £17. So just multiply these, yeah? So, also, so that means altogether she sold them for, if you add up the, the money, £24. So that's good money. That's a good return from £7.60 actually. Now, work out Emily's percentage profit. Easy. Okay, so do, to do something like this, you can literally use the classical formula, which is the OV, 1 plus or minus array, gives us the new value. Okay, OV is the old value, NV is the new value. Okay, where the old value in this case is going to be £7.60, representing the cost. 
because it's a percentage profit, profit means you're going up, it'd be one plus that percentage rate equals a new value, which is how much you sold it for, 24 pounds. Okay, now all you literally do is just rearrange to find R, where R is going to be your percentage profit, yeah? So we can what we could do, we can just divide 7.60 across, and then you're going to have 1 plus R equals 24 over 7.60, oops, and then literally minus 1 across. You're going to get minus 1, okay, you're going to get a weird answer, yeah? You're going to get a decimal answer of 2.15, and whatever that is, multiply by 100, because they want to... A percentage profit so times in 100 mm -mm. you're gonna get to the nearest whole number 216 percent profit yep you can have a profit which is re really big like above 100 just remember 24 is way more than double 760 so it makes sense okay number 11 so here is a solid trapezium okay the cross section of the prism is a trapezium so the cross section is this front face here and it extends all the way across so that's why it looks like a prism on a 3d scale now work out the total surface area of the prism okay so this is easy you just have to look at the shape and pretty much calculate the area of every single face now look at this carefully this shape is made up of two trapeziums so one here and one and another one behind and they're identical by the way of course and you got four other rectangles so you got a curved one here one at the top one in the back here and one on the ground. So let's work out each area. Yeah? Now the area of the trapezium is given in the front of the book and the formula is something like half um, A plus B times the vertical height. So this is the area of the trapezium. Now A plus B is simply the two parallel lengths like 21 and 27. So to work out this first, the formula is literally going to be then half 21 plus 27 times the vertical height, which is eight. Now, because you've got two trapeziums, we can literally just double this result and then double this result too. And if you do this, put this in a calculator, including in times two, you'll get 384 centimeters squared. So that's the that's the trapezium done. Now let's have a look at the, um, the rectangles here. Yeah? So look at the, uh, at the first rectangle here, so the kind of bend, bendy one. We've got a length of 30 and um, another length of 10. So you literally just do base times height. So 30 times 10 will give us 300. So this is 300. Now looking at the top um, over here. So this area here, whoops. You've got a length of 21 and you're going to have another um, similar length here. So a parallel length of 30. So this length here is 30. So the form is literally going to be base times high again. Remember, this is just a rectangle, okay? And it's going to be 21 times 30, which is going to give us 630. Now the other two rectangles is the one on the ground, so over here, it's going to be 27 times the similar length, which is 30, so 27 times 30, and that's going to give us 810, okay, and the last rectangle is over here, so you've got 8 by, and then this length here is parallel to this length here, so 8 by 30, and 8 by 30 is 240. And that's it guys and now all you want to do is literally add up every single length so 240 plus 630 plus 300 plus 810 plus 384 and you should get a total area of 2364 centimeter squared and that's it guys literally done okay number 12 so there are 40 children at a kindergarten <clears throat> 24 of the children are boys and 16 are girls now, the boys have a mean height of 113 centimeters, whereas the girls have a mean height of 110. Now, they want us to find the mean height of all 40 children at this kindergarten. Now, this is known as the weighted mean, by the way, guys. A very unique formula. And the way it works is very nice. So, we can say that 40, 24 boys with a mean height of 113 plus 16 girls with a mean height of 110 must give us, which is 40, with a mean height of something M. Yeah, and that's it, 40M. Now, all you want to do is literally just, well, divide um, 40 across and find M. And that's easy. So, smash this in the calculator and divide it by 40. You should get a mean height of 111.8 centimeters. And that makes sense because that falls in between 110 and 113. 
So Remy invests 18,000 dirham in a savings account for three years. Now he gets 1.2% per year compound interest. So this means that his money is going up every single year by 1.2% for three years. How much will he have in his savings account at the end of the three years? Okay, now this is very standard formula, yeah? You have the original amount, you, you, you increase it upwards or downwards, and it'll give you a new value. And because you're dealing with several years, we're going to put a power of 3 here. And that's straightforward. So then we can basically say that he invested an original amount of 18,000 and it's gone up. So he's a plus value by 1.2%. All to the power of 3. And then when you do this, and by the way, they want the answer to the nearest Durham. So that means the nearest whole number. So you're going to get an answer approximately equal to 18,650. Six and this is being rounded upwards from six five five point eight. So the group frequency table gives information about the distances that one hundred and twenty people travel to get to work. Okay, complete the cumulative frequency table. Now, cumulative frequency literally means that you're adding as you go along, so you're collecting the people as the distances increase. So that's why the values start from zero to five, and, it's, and now it's going to be zero to anything because you're including everybody from the beginning as you go up. So with the easy way to do it, start from the 8th, from the very beginning, you had 8 people, oops, um, so you had 8 people who travelled up to 5 kilometers. that means up to 10, you include both of these numbers, 8 and 20, which makes 28, and up to 15, you add another 27, which is 55, so just use a calculator guys, yeah, um, up to 20, you add 29 more, which is 85, 84, and keep on going, yeah. So keep doing this for the rest. Add 18, add 11, and add 7. Okay, so that was easy one mark. And you, by the way, a little tip here. Yeah? Because you know there were 120 people that travelled, the final amount must be 120, which, acute, which accounts for every single person. So that's a little tip to make sure you get it right. Okay, next bit. Now on the grid, draw the cumulative frequency graph for your table. So the way to plot this, you, you literally um, start like this. You have, um, for so you can say for up to 5 kilometers, there were 8 people altogether. Up to 10, there were 28, and so on. So these are your coordinates, 5 to 8, 10 to 28, and so on. Now looking at this graph here, we have distance at the bottom, so we can count in, so you've got 5, 10, and so on. And you've got cumulative frequency all the way up to 120 here. So plotting this carefully, for the first set of values, you've got 5 and 8. So 5 is here, and 8 goes up to, so this is going up in 2s, yeah? Oh, why did they do this line? 5 and 8. Okay, next one would be do, 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 10 and 28. So 10 and 20. You know, 20. Yeah, this is going to look weird, by the way, but you get the idea. And we're going to do this all the way across, yeah? 10, 28, 15 and 55. Okay, and then when you do all of this, don't forget to, to put a plot at 0, because this means that for... Um, up to zero, nobody traveled it because you know no one traveled up to zero. Okay, and then all you do now is just connect this and try and draw an S shaped curve. Yeah, so a bit it's gonna be quite hard for me because it's a computer. Um, I'll try anyway. So, so it looks like this. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Now, finally, part uh, C. So, use your graph to find an estimate for the interquartile range of the distance traveled. Okay, guys, when you see the final answers, it's going to look slightly different. So I'm just going to show you the method and <laughs> I'm just going to hope it's right because I don't have the mark scheme at the moment. So interquartile range. This literally means the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So that's what interquartile means, the difference between the, the quartiles. Now, the upper quartile is literally the third quarter of um, all your people. So because you've got 120, you literally need to find the third quarter, so three quarters of 120. Doing this in your calculator, you'll get 90, which is here. To find the lower quartile, it's the first quarter of 120. And of course, one quarter of 120 is 30, so that's about here. Now, all you literally do is extend the line across. So again, this is not going to be really accurate, but I'll see how that goes. And then you extend it downwards. So I'm just going to drag the mouse like this. Ooh, okay, you get about 20, actually. That's nice. Let's just say it was 20, yeah? And then for 30... Again, same thing applies, and then shoot it downwards. You know, I'm just going to do it like that. Okay, you get about 10. 
All right, so this is this is gonna be kind of weird. So, let's, tell me what you guys get in, in your in the in your as your final answer, yeah. So the so you can say that the interquartile range between twenty and ten. So you subtract them. Twenty minus ten is ten. That's it. 